Yo, 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 check it. This is Russell coming at you live on my Adventure Time podcast. What, what? Yo, Ned, say what word to the people. Yo, what's going on, guys? This is DJ Neddy P coming at you live from my boring ass office. And I'm here with Russell to talk to you about Daddy's Little Monster. Daddy's okay, Little Daddy. Monster. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what it Daddy? is. Uh, yep. Yep. That. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That's what it, that, that's you know how many times is. I wanted to just like watch this episode and be like, Daddy. Why? Why is that? Uh, I've got one. I've got a, I always got to get a, a, a friend of mine that like, I don't know if it's like a funny tick he has now, but like all the time he'll just like do it to like break the silence in the room. He'll just be like, Daddy. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I rascal feel about flats. That. It's so, so cringe, so uncomfortable, but. Thank you, everybody who's still listening. This is an Adventure Time podcast, and yes, we are talking about. Do it, Ned. Do your, do your thing. Daddy's little monster. Daddy's little monster. This is <laughs> season four, episode six, uh, and also the ninetieth episode of the Never Ending yeah. Adventure podcast, which is it's so freaking cool. nainers, dude. Freaking so nainers. so stuff, you know, real ban- bananas. Ban- yeah, what is it? Jake says. Jake says Craze bananas, craze bananas. It's uh, craze bananas. Dude, it's very cool. Ninety episodes. We're ten away from you know, gosh, a hundred. I just can't even imagine that. Blows my mind. Yeah. But episode thank you for everyone that's be, here with us. Will be our hundredth episode. What I don't know what we'll do. We'll have to just get like super champagne drunk before we record or something. Yeah, maybe like that. so. Yeah, do do some sort of a special thing. But um, yeah. Anyways, Ned, how you been? I, I feel like we haven't talked since the last time we recorded. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of like vacation planning right now. And I noticed that on the schedule is Arctic Monkeys Ooh. in uh, September. Did you end up buying tickets to that? I don't no, know. I didn't know that was going down, man. Is it? At, I told you about it, that we were going to come down to Atlanta. Uh, oh, I, I, I must have forgotten. You might need to check to see if you bought tickets or not, because I think you said that you did. Anyways, we're going to do this I, after the podcast. I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, regardless, um, yeah, man, how how things been in Atlanta? You've been good. Oh, it's been it's good, good slow start to the year, I'd say. Um, got that new puppy I was talking about, so keeping me up, uh, waking me up in the mornings and keeping me nice and and stressed through my days. So uh, not too bad. I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only. Yeah, imagine. it's um, puppies are very sweet, but man, I'll tell you what, like being in the house with one all day and i don't know everybody out there that has children that's listening to this podcast is like you don't even know what it's like to have children but i'm like yeah being around him like constantly is like okay i got he's in the crate right now and not barking so i'm very proud yeah a bit of the struggle i can imagine certainly yeah what about you Um, man what you guys been up to comparable uh entirely uh man you know it's been like you said kind of chill kind of getting back into the swing of things i've been uh, inspired to bike as I was talking about last week or the other week um, with the Zwift thing. It's just like a video game. It's so fun. I feel privileged to have the ability to do this kind of like Peloton esque stationary bike video game that I have. Um, so it's inspired me to ride some, which is good. And, you know, I need to get back to the why. And other than exercising things, to been watching a lot of One Piece. We, we finally bit the bullet and got a Funimation subscription. So we've been just binge watching one piece on Funimation. Is that, is that what crunchy roll became or is crunchy roll still a thing? Crunchy roll bought Funimation and they also bought VRV, I believe. Uh, but not every title has transferred over due to licensing and whatever else to, um, crunchy roll. Yeah. I would love to just be able to get a crunchy roll, uh, subscription because there's a lot more options, a lot more things to watch on there. But we kind of like, we've been digging the dub. Honestly, I hate to admit it. We've been digging the dub of one piece. And so uh, on Funimation, they have like over 600 episodes in dubbed. And so we're just like cruising our way through it. I don't even want to say what episode number we're on. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I think we we just did our seasonal uh, Harry Potter binge through, or we're in the middle of oh, it. Oh, nice. And yeah, I that's think great. We, yeah, it's been like four days, and we're on like the seventh movie. So, yeah, I'm I'm with you on those those binge days. What school are you? What are you? Are you uh, can I guess? Are you a Ravenclaw? I I think the last time I took the quiz, I was. Yeah. Okay. 
What do you think I am? Can you can you guess what you I, think I might be? I think you're either a Slytherin or a Hufflepuff. A Slytherin? What? Yeah. You think I'm a bad guy? Not all Slytherins are bad guys. I'll I'll say <laughs> that. But say, you think like, I'm a bad guy? Ever... Am I right though? Uh, I'm a Hufflepuff for sure. Okay, I knew it was yeah. like one of the two. I'm a Hufflepuff, and I truly believe, and this is coming from a like I like Harry Potter, but I'm not like an obsessive Harry Potter person by any means. We'll see. Um, I'm I'm not either by any means until this new Hogwarts Legacy game comes yeah. out. And I good. just got a PS5 and I'm going to play the shit out of that game. Well, I, I truly believe that no one is actually a Gryffindor. I think people just say that they're Gryffindors because they really exactly. want to be. So I appreciate the fact that neither one of us did. Uh, but if you're a Gryffindor listening, uh, this is an Adventure Time podcast, so I don't have to be good or right or smart <laughs> exactly. about Harry Potter things. You know, we don't tangent. And uh, <laughs> y'all, if we are ranting way too much during our catch up period, uh, give us some feedback because we just like catching up and we like to kind of uh, loosen the air in the room before we yeah. get into some fun topics and some deep topics. Because I got some deep stuff to go into today. Yeah, me too, I think. Uh, you know, I, I started this episode kind of doing the iCarly intro that is the intro to this episode daddy's little monster that jate does with his iphone he's inspired to be a vlogger for some reason i, I don't know where that's coming from but i kind of dig it and he's doing it on a flip yeah. phone so there's he's there's some mad respect for that video can yeah my video camera phone um and i love i do love that like in the episode artistically speaking the whole it's like two minutes is the whole like time when marceline sings her song and it's phenomenal but the whole border of it it is like watching it on a phone, which I thought was really cool. So much of this episode is just him vlogging. And that is such a fun concept for a, like, we aren't doing this in present. We're watching this with you. And then occasionally commenting on what just happened, like a great and my tops of the episode is gotta be when they revisit the scene and the, um, the prison with the, the prison guard demon and the stuff. <laughs> And you know they figure out what the bananas are. It's it's the the demon poo out of their ears, right? Yeah. And their response to that, where Jake is holding a banana, he's got it peeled. He's, he's like, about to yeah. just eat it, you know. And he goes, "Okay, well that's gross." I I thought that was so funny, but it it does play into like a fun aspect of this episode for sure. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a, it's a cool way to shoot it, and it's just yeah, it's funny how they do the little isms, like with him like poking his head around the camera and like talking to the camera. Yeah, or stuff. like so, flashing over to as she as he's recording, flashing over the Finn, and Finn's making like funny voices or funny faces when yeah, like doing the like cheek when he's like yeah, when Hudson Abadir says that this place runs off of chaos, like that is yeah. that is very <laughs> cool. I do I do really appreciate that about this episode. I did. I did. Well, I would say it, it didn't make my tops, but we did glance over. You said the episode opened. We it opens on the phone charging up, and Bemo's like trying his best to like charge the phone. And he's like, "Oh, yeah, I'm doing yeah. it! I'm doing it!" And I was like, "Oh, that was like a runner-up tops for me." It was what like a cutie! Bemo forcibly pushing out a turd slash pushing out <laughs> oh, charge. What a like, cutie! I thought that was so great. I I made note of that as well. I. I'm a big BMO fan. I can't believe, I don't imagine anyone is not a BMO fan, but I guess yeah, someone that's... somewhere isn't for some reason, which mm. just so, seems silly to me. He's so funny. I know. So cute. I mean, they, yeah, I'm, I'm sure at this point, there's not been enough BMO moments for you to like, not like BMO at all. Yeah. Do you, are there moments later in the show? I, again, if you're listening for the first time, this is my first time watching through Adventure Time. So I am discovering this, but are there moments in the show later in Adventure time. Uh, there's some go, there's oh, some longer know. there's some longer episodes with football that I could see why people may not like, but okay. I enjoy them. Well, that first football and Bumo moment that we had a couple episodes back was that was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> it's, it gets a it gets a lot more in depth and a lot more like trippy, multi universal type stuff. So yeah, uh, hang in you see for that one, but I'll I'll see what you think about it when we get there. Yeah, I, well, I'm down for that. That sounds great. Um, um, well, I also love like exactly what you said when Hunton pulls Marceline over and he's like, you see, this, this is the nightosphere. It's sustained by chaos. Look at all the confused and frustrated little demons out there. And it kind of proved like our theory of what we were talking about last week of saying like, 
uh, the he's created these lines and these systems to to drive them crazy on purpose. And yeah. so it's like, yeah, absolutely. He's he's not just like burning people or tearing people in half or or just causing pain, but he's doing like little strategic things like making people wait in line and making them throw up bananas and giving them abs for a face, which I think might lead to my lovely of the episode was the face abs demon. Okay, yeah, the little ant demon guy. Yeah. That's, yeah. That was a funny moment, the the PP but, uh, WP, but it is it is a real Mufasa Simba moment when he's talking to Marceline about Ooh, yeah, like good, look good over reference. this is all that we have but nowhere near as great as the Mufasa Simba moment you know where he's talking about the kingdom and and all you can see is what we rule or whatever but it is it's interesting man that's their family business I I can relate I, in this episode yeah, I feel like I relate a lot to Marceline and their being I was gonna I literally business. had that that written down as a question for you is that you do have that whole concept of a family business where it's been handed down and the son works for the dad and like, and you didn't do that. So you're very much in Marceline's shoes. Oh, totally. And it was something that my entire family really decided not to do. All the cousins, none of them did it. My sister didn't do it. I didn't do it. Um, my older cousins, second cousins did try two for a little bit and it just didn't work out sort of a thing mm. uh, not to get too deep into that necessarily but yeah in this episode we have Marceline's song right which is such a pivotal moment I think or, or such a cool moment whenever we have Marceline singing or a character singing a lot of times it's very revealing in Adventure Time of who they are what they're going through at the moment and this improvised song that Marceline sings called Not Just Your Little Girl uh, really says and kind of speaks to how I felt when I was kind of dealing with um, the family business and, and whether I was going to go into it or not, because I really was contemplating that a lot senior year of college. And it was really the best option in many ways, the most obvious, coolest, well, not coolest option, but certainly the most obvious option and an option that would lead to a great life long term and one where I'm working closely with family, which a lot of people don't have the privilege to do that. I don't live anywhere near my family now, which, you know, certainly is something that I gave up by not doing that. But to kind of talk about Marceline's song for a minute here, not just your little girl, she has a line in the song, because I want your respect. I want to be here, but I don't want to rule the nightosphere. And that's the line, the last line of the little tune. You know, it's very short, probably 16, 24 bars at most. But that's the line that really speaks to me and speaks to my situation, in my opinion, at least. She's, it's very relatable, except the fact that I moved. She says that I want to be here. She wants to be present. She wants to be around her father. She wants his respect. She just doesn't want to be in the situation where she's ruling the nightosphere for the rest of her life. And yeah, you, I you, didn't want to work in pest control, right? Like I, I wanted to find my own way to get out, but to be fair... Um, and at the time I, I didn't really, I didn't really want the respect necessarily, or I didn't seek out the respect. I didn't leave hoping for the respect. Cause I think the respect would have come from staying in a lot of ways for me. Um, mm -hmm. and as time has gone on, I think the desire for the respect, the desire for, uh, be proud of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it has grown and gone back to the way that it probably is for you or it is for most people who had a good upbringing where they want their parents to be proud of them. But I didn't make my decision to go to Nashville based off of like, Oh, I'm going to make you proud. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in, in that sense, especially with Marceline, you really have to take a step back and look at this song is a huge staple of her character development because we saw the daddy's fries episode where she was writing this very sad, like, I'm so hurt and like probably didn't have a relationship with her dad all semi based around the fact that he ate her fries, but obviously something a little bit more deep rooted in that. And now they moved beyond that. And so I think she was like, I'm hanging out in the nightosphere and it's super boring. Obviously she wants to be there. Obviously they got over the hump of um, whatever it might've been that was like holding her back from being with her dad of like, the fries thing, but really, I guess it, you know, the family business stuff and being her own person. 
And that's when she did like move away and, and I think had separated herself from her dad on purpose. And this is, I think, a really cool part about her development in, in a lot of how we have relationships with our parents moving forward into adulthood is like, I want to be here. I want your respect and I want to have a relationship. There is a desire for me to want to come hang out with you, even if it's boring, even if it's, you know, I, I get bored when I go back home sometimes. And, and it's your choice um, now, I think it's the big thing. And it's, you're saying, yeah, it's, right? it's your choice and it's her choice to be there. Because your childhood, um, your upbringing, what happens to you a lot of, you don't really have a lot of say in that matter. And you shouldn't because yeah. you're a child, you know, and hopefully you have good parents that are taking care of you along the way and guiding you in the right direction. But eventually when you do become an adult, it is fully your decision to have your parents be a part of your lives or not. And I, you know, I guess being a, a family person, like, like family means so much to me. I would hope that everybody feels like they want that, but I could totally understand there are situations where that's not the case and it's healthier for the person if that's not the case, which is, it's very sad. It is sad, you know, and I'm sure yeah, that's something yeah. that well, and, has, and, that's yeah. not an easy decision, you know? Yeah. And, and for Marceline, I mean, it's, it's tough, you know, we'll get into this more in the second half too, but you know, more people think, oh, it's not like her dad hates her. It's not like her dad's mad at her or like force. Like, I guess he is forcing the family business yeah, on her to a he degree, does. but not, he in, does in this episode. not in a pressure <laughs> sense. Uh, we'll get into that deeper <laughs> later. Um, but yeah, it can be equally as hard, like going back and spending time with your parents when it's, you, you fall back into weird high schooly growing up things like being in like when he rips off the amulet and he's just like in his underwear and she's embarrassed but she shrugs it off you know like she's grown up now like she doesn't have to be embarrassed by her parents or anything so yeah. I, I i find it very mature of her that she's there she invites her friends over they're just doing a jam session uh and that she's trying her best to make the relationship work and this time around it is absolutely all Hudson that's ruining everything. Yeah. But what a funny moment that is when he takes the amulet off and his suit comes off as well. And his excuse is to give her the amulet. I'm going to, I'm going to take a nappy. Like, I'm just going to go I'm take, a, take nap. a nappy. Wear and this amulet. It'll grant you any wish wishes you want, like, like ponies, ponies or whatever, <laughs> whatever kids like, I don't know what kids like. <laughs> She's like, I'm a well, thousand and, years old, bro. Like, you know, as, I've been as here forever. As funny of a little comment as that is, is that it, it's speaking to he doesn't see her as a grown up anymore. No, like daddy's a little monster. He's daddy's little monster. So she's, and again, he could be making little comments like that, and and he's doing everything in his power, un, unknowingly pushing her away, and she sticks around. So, uh, and and the episode ends with her like being like, "Yeah, I'll talk to you later, Dad. You know, see you, see you later." So. Uh, I, I think I, I get really, this is why I like Marceline more as the seasons grow on. You see a lot of her maturity and a lot of her growing up, uh, even though she's a thousand years old already, you see way more growing up in the last four seasons than all other thousand years combined. Yeah. Yeah. That ending is cool too, where she's basically just saying like, or he's saying Hudson's saying like, don't you want to make your old man proud and take over the night sphere? She's like, of, of course, I, I want to make you proud. You know, I'm just not going to do it that way. And fortunately, he's able and willing to say that he is proud. like, of course, I'm proud of you. And your friends are all right. It, it is a it is a sweet little bow tie ending, in my opinion. And I don't know how you feel about this, Ned, because he is definitely a controversial character, probably. Right. He's the ruler of the Nine Sphere. But Hudson is my lovely of this episode. Okay, yeah. I Without got, a doubt. I got that, yeah. He's great. He's so interesting. His character is well-developed. He's not the best father, but in some ways you see growth in him in this episode, which is really yeah. like what I was talking about right there at the end. I think that's really important. And he even pulls the amulet off of Finn. But then I, I don't know why. the His like terrible... like. Marceline, uh, I wonder what happened to him. Kids these days, am I right? Like <laughs> that terrible <laughs> excuse for like, I don't know what yeah. happened. Kind of won me over on him a little bit this episode. I was just like, oh, that was goofy. I like that. Like, yeah, you're well, you see, you're it's, just it's cool. It's cool when you can see 
I think adult figures and, and parental figures be open to change and open to being apologetic. And I would say with people in general, but especially with parents, like becoming a, have, you know, developing that peer, peer to peer relationship, not like a parent to a child relationship when you can be like, I made a mistake. Uh, I'm a parent and I can, I have to say, I'm sorry. And I did something wrong and be open to that. It, it leads to a lot of, I think, development within the relationship, you know, that the relationship between Marcy and her dad's getting stronger because he was like, Oh shoot. You know, like, I'm sorry. I won't do that again. You know? Yeah, no, totally, man. Well, let's, let's take a moment and I think we should go to the commercial and we'll come back and we'll kind of flesh out this episode a little bit more and, and dive a little deeper. And I'm sure a lot of what we'll be talking about is uh, parent relationships and our lives. And also yeah, I've, I've got a few deeper th- We've got a few deeper thoughts on it too that we'll we'll dive into. Yeah. All right. Cool. Today's episode is brought to you by Demonic Stuff Softener by Get Your Shit Rhydosphere. It's the best banana laxative on the market. Number one demon recommended for occasional use. Provided it provides effective and predictable gentle constipation relief. However, side effects may include poop in hands of bananas while of course only fingers are preferred if this side effect lasts for more than three hours please plug it up your ears that is and head to hudson abadir for a free consultation and welcome back everybody hello we're back we're here to talk more about daddy's little that little monster that is a little monster now did you that enjoy the monster. seinfeld demon that we had in this episode Wait, what was the Seinfeld demon? There's definitely the dude with the coffee cup who's standing in line. What are you guys oh, doing? Running up to the, little, the, the front on. of the line. <laughs> yeah. Step it back. I, move I appreciated it back. that. Yeah, that was uh, great. I, I, it had to be. I couldn't imagine what else that was referring to other than it must have been a Seinfeld reference, right? It, I could see that. I, I have never gotten on the Seinfeld train. Okay. I know I should because it's like the core of like how those shows were all made. Yeah, you just watch. I've like never the hopped on the episodes. bandwagon. Yeah, I, I would just watch the the iconic episodes like uh, the Ass Man episode, the Soup uh, Nazi episode. There's a couple other ones that really stick out to me as classic Seinfeld episodes. The one where they all try not to. Um, gosh, all right, we're gonna go. Uh, what is it? R rated on this one? Pleasure themselves. That's a great, very funny Seinfeld <laughs> episode. Um, it's it's I can't remember what it's called, but if you haven't seen it and you're of age or whatever, I don't know. Just go check it out. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's it's side film, man. It, yeah, if it's it played film. on TBS at three in the afternoon, I think it's appropriate for most yeah. everybody. And then like every day for the rest of time on every you know sitcom. <laughs> if it's not on network. TNT, it's on FX. If it's not on FX, it's on TBS. Yeah, exactly. it's like it's everywhere, man. But um, well, on the topic of the demons themselves, I thought. It was really funny, and before we get back into our deeper Marcy topics, uh, to talk about the demons in the political rap. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Finn's, Finn's political rap and why they even do it is all because they are looking for a way to get these people amped up, get these demons amped up, fight Marceline in her possessed state. And because Jake references them as complacent sheeple, Finn's like, you know what? <laughs> what's great for complacent sheeple? An inspiring political rap. Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, and I thought it was hilarious, and I thought it was such a fun poke that the writers did at the way I guess people are inspired by politics. Is his whole rap is just like, uh, yeah, farmers markets. Uh, what does he say? Something domes. Uh, <laughs> like, um riding bikes yeah and it just reminded me just like uh, of the very progressive whether it's a green party liberal or republican that every time that like politicians want to seem cool they're like they just get on one pedestal and they're like yeah we're gonna be eco-friendly yeah we're going green and not to say none of that stuff is good obviously a lot of that is great farmers markets are great but it's just really funny that that's he says all that and yeah. the one demon turns around and it's just like 
Oh, well, I've never thought of it that way before. It's just poking like whatever the hot phrase is or, or the hot token item is at the moment, you know, and then hoping everybody that's listening and follows you and goes, oh, that's great. Even though you'll probably forget it or move on to some other thing. I don't know. And, you know, as politicians do, they, they claim they're going to do one thing and then they don't until right before they're about to run again or something. And then all of a sudden they do all these great things or they try to or. Yeah, you know, it's silly. But yeah. the political rap we won't is get it, we fantastic. won't get into it. it got me. We don't want to lean political on this podcast, but no. obviously it's very much of a tongue in cheek little moment oh, yeah. in this episode. It could easily go up like right over your head, but it's very much tongue in cheek too. Well, it caused a straight up riot that allowed Finn to snad the amulet. I mean, the only band I mean, maybe System of a Down sometimes, Rage Against the Machine will get me in that mood where like thinking of political rappers where I'm just like, and they're a rock group, right? But he's rapping on top of funk and and hard rock instrumentals. That'll get me yeah. going. That, that'll get me pissed off listening to some Rage Against the Machine. To that um, and some Beastie Boys. Some Beastie Boys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, there's other, you know, non- white guy rock uh, music bands that <laughs> i was gonna say that. rise against but i was like oh yeah that's uh also but rise I mean, against yeah. does not do that for me yeah. i'm sorry oh, no. rise but... against did it for me oh back my in, gosh uh, in my in my young my youngin days <laughs> your pop punk days that have continued oh, yeah <laughs> my when we were young fest days yep there um, you go that festival was meant for you ned it was i didn't go but oh well <laughs> okay. i don't think it was worth spending four thousand no, dollars to go to las not vegas at all. for not at all oh well, man but that what was, brought yeah, that us was, there I, though right like we, we skipped a little bit of what was going on in case you aren't super familiar with this episode but essentially they're they went back into the nightosphere after uh watching all of the videos on the phone in order to um i guess try and free marceline they know at that point right yeah, yeah, they know at this point that it's Marceline, and Finn wants to go back to help her. Essentially, yeah. that he doesn't and want to leave use, her there stranded. They used a spell from that first time that they went. Uh, it came mm-hmm. in. It came from the Ninosphere. They used that same portal spell to get back into it. Um, yeah, they had to draw the fill cool. face. Yeah, they had to uh, put bug milk on it and say uh, Meloso v- 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 Oh gosh, I'm going to butcher the Latin. Meloso. Oh, it's all good. Vabiscum et cum spiritum, which translates to evil be with you and with your spirit, which I thought was pretty dark. <laughs> which also, they totally skip all of the lines that they had to wait in in that first episode. There is a line that they're waiting mm. here to get up to Marceline, but it's well, nowhere near as severe like, as, or as annoying as the first the episode. Last, the last episode uh, and was Marceline. Just remember, she like laser zapped the entire, like most of one of those long lines. Yeah, so half of those people are dead, but there's still 42 million people. Well, no, sorry, that would have well, been what was in front of them. You're their, right. Their portal then opened up straight into like okay, the Marcy's house. castle, so they weren't That's like true. outside. So they did cut those other, you know, 400 yeah. million people or whatever. But that's when we we come across the, uh, I mean, basically the amulets causing Marceline to be an agent of chaos, and you have the pain, pleasure, or weird punishment bit, which is what you referred to earlier with your favorite character or your lovely, um, the dude who wants abs and gets abs on his <laughs> nose. <laughs> well, yeah, it was like the first guy is like, I want pleasure. And he's like, no, weird punishment. Then one guy was like, thought it was a trick question and was like, I'll take the pain then. And then he gets sliced in half. Yeah. And what was the, the first the one? It was just was... bananas out the mouth, right? The weird punishment yeah, was... was... The stuff coming flying out of the your mouth. Stuff oh, flying out of your mouth. Diarrhea mouth entirely. Diarrhea mouth. Good well, band name. I was oh, Diarrhea Planet. Pretty close. Uh, yeah. Ned, I was gonna say when next time I see you, whenever we come down to Atlanta, um, I'm gonna ask you whether you want PP or WP. PP. And actually, or how about WP? right now? You just tell me what <laughs> what would you rather have? I already have the three options for what those mean. Do you I want, want pain, pleasure. pleasure. Do you want pleasure? It's a pleasure. Yeah. Oh, looks like I'm gonna uh, twist your nipple when I get into town. <laughs> twist your love handles like that yeah. little demon does. You sure you didn't want pain or weird punishment? I'm I'm sure. All right. Well, pain would have been. I was, I'm gonna twist your nip when I come into town. <laughs> and weird punishment? Would you be twist my nip? 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there for was sure, there was sure. no other option. That's only what's going to happen. That's the only option. Trick questions. <laughs> Trick questions. <laughs> well, it fits for all three of those. So I, I just had to. Uh, for some people, you know, I, I, you may not be into that for pleasure, but I don't know. But you know, yeah, you never know. You never know. You never know. know. You never know. You never know. There's there's probably little machines for that, right? Yeah. Well, they. <laughs> yeah, we, we're we're not go- we're going a little above PG thirteen in this episode. That's fine. <laughs> Prior to the riot, right, they go and they see Hudson Abadir in the kitchen, and he's just making a snack, just like, I guess he just woke up for a little bit from his uh, little nappy yeah, poo ta- that he was doing taking. doing a little midnight snack, man. And and I, I always, like, love that in the nightosphere, they have, like, a, a 19, his, his house or whatever, it's like, it looks like a very, like, 1950s house. Yeah, but it it's reminds like, outside me of the Marshall like hell. Kitchen, right? Or, no, yeah, I guess yeah. that was the same thing because I'm I'm just thinking of the flashback, or the when they were, oh gosh, what am I thinking of? It's the episode where they see Marceline as a child and they go into the kitchen for a minute. Was that the same kitchen or was that Marceline's kitchen in her house inside the cave? Um, that I think, I think what we've seen at this point is just the house inside the cave. Okay, all right. Well, it is a very similar kitchen then. Yeah, yeah. So she has it, a taste. I think it's funny I, that it's like a 1950s style kitchen. And it also, I think, maybe strategically gets to him. It gets to the point that, like, he's, I don't know. It just feels like a fatherly kitchen, like a yeah. 1950s, like old oh, totally man does. stuck in his ways, kind of, you know, makes him a, he's a nice guy. It's like always smiling too, but it makes him seem a little bit more of that like old man father figure yeah, and the, I, and the wife beater in boxer combo too. Yeah. That terrible, no one should ever buy or wear one of those tank tops. I, I am, I've never owned one. I just don't think, I personally don't think that they look good on anybody. I know some people love them, but it's just not my style. Yeah. It's not my style. It's not my style neither. There's a reason yeah. why they're called wife beaters. Well, that's when you get the the reveal that Hudson is kind of stuck in his ways and he really just wanted Marceline to go into the family business, which is why he gave her the amulet. And he claims, I mean, he reveals it to us that the wearer of the amulet is filled with chaotic evil, which is how he grew up. That's where his childhood came from or, mm-hmm. or how he experienced childhood was wearing this amulet that was probably already causing a very crazy pubescent demonic guy that's supposed to rule the nightosphere to act even crazier as Marceline does. Um, But it is interesting seeing the parents, their expectations on how they were raised or like versus how they want to raise their own kids, whether they feel like, Oh, this worked for me. Like he feels, Oh, I was raised with this amulet on. And it caused mm-hmm. me to have chaotic, evil feelings. And it worked for me, so I want to do it to my child as well. Or the opposite could have been, I hated that. I hated having that amulet on. And I'm going to try and do the exact opposite of that. Um, you know, and, and that's just, it's interesting to see that. I feel like whether with our generation, and I was trying to think of like how my parents may have felt when they were kids or how, say, my dad may have felt. I think sometimes he kind of hints at like, there wasn't as much attention. Like people weren't going to every sports game that he ever had, or there wasn't as much involvement. So it feels like to me, he tried to do the opposite of that where he was like, I'm going to be super hyper involved in every athletic thing that Russell does for all of his childhood, whether it's baseball, football, cycling, you know, like all of that, he was crazy involved. Um, I don't know, man. It'll be interesting to see how we are as parents because I know we're going to take a lot of what our parents did and hopefully do a lot of not what our parents did, such as both of us come from divorced families, right? You know, like, yeah, it'd be great to not have to do that. I mean, that's what they, that's what they say, like parenting is and, and what you should have as a parent in your expectations of your child is to be better than I ever was. And that's how you're supposed to like parent and, um, you're like, you're supposed to parent and be like, I'm going to be a better parent than my parents, you know, like were to me. And then you're, you would look at your children and you'd be like, I would like you to be a better child than I was and a better person than I, I want to raise you to be better than myself. And I think that Hudson does the exact opposite of that. And, and honestly, I think it's a very like narcissistic way of looking at it, of going, 
well, I t- like, like exactly what you said. I turned out all right. And I walked, you know, to school in the snow, up hills, both ways, all my growing up and I turned out fine. So you're going to do the same thing. And it's, it's very yeah. spiteful in, in some parents cases, but you know, going back to the amulet part, I think it's really funny too, that, you know, he says, whoever wears the amulets filled with chaotic evil. And that's the way I was brought up. But obviously when Hudson wears the amulet, he's not, he can be a raging monster, but he can turn it on and off. And I think it's just cause he's probably thousands of years old at this point. I think he's, like, he's conquered it. Like he's taken, yeah, it's, he's, he's gotten to the point where con- he controls the amulet versus the amulet controlling him. But on the flip side of that too, that means that it's his core personality. So he can take the amulet off and, you know, the chaotic evil is, I would say not really out of him. It's just ingrained into him. Like he is the amulet. The amulet now is just his little like soul sucking powers in the amulet but he could take it off and he's still filled with that same chaotic evil so yeah. it's kind of in 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 a way i was thinking about it was was like you know you could grow up or be so ingrained in such a bad situation that you can thrust it upon other people and expect them to handle it just the same and and you can't you know just like if you you know, I've had a lot of family members pass away, you know, like, like grandmas and aunts and, and stuff like that. And, um, then, you know, I, I have friends and they have the first death they've ever experienced before either a friend or a, a family member. And I get unfair. I'm like, Oh yeah. You know, like it happens, like, ha- like handle it. And it's kind of like, that's, I'm so used to that at this point that I still have to feel empathy for somebody that hasn't had that core like built into them, you know, or hasn't yeah, gone no, through that totally. in the same way. And I say all that to say with like Hudson being like, Oh yeah. Like being filled with chaotic evil is great. Isn't the night sphere so great. And Marcy and Finn who've never had that. It's, it's terrible. And Finn pretty much has a panic attack at the end of the episode yeah. <laughs> when he's laying on the floor, like covered in sweat. Um, so I say all that to say like in back in the parenting world too, of like, yeah, you can't just expect your, your kids you're raising to be like, Oh yeah. Like I used to go out and have to do four hours worth of yard work in 105 degree heat. Like you'll do the (laughs) same. And like, maybe that's not a good idea. Yeah. Maybe not. Or, you know, my, my mom or dad used to make me go out to the yard and get switches. So I'm a, Oh, you to pick your own switches. (laughs) But that's just a joke. I mean, he never made me do that certainly, but he used to joke every birthday, every single year that he was going to make me go get switches. And I don't know why he's like, I'm going to get you switches for your birthday. I'm like, all right, dad, sure you are. <laughs> all right, dad. Thanks. So grateful he did. But... Um, yeah, no, that's, that's fascinating. It is certainly what's interesting about that comparison though, is that they're both things that we don't want anyone ever to have to deal with. It's just mm-hmm. one of those things is a matter of life. You're going to have to deal with deaths eventually. Um, because it's like the only thing that we can promise is going to happen one day. Um, and then the other thing is like, hopefully Marceline doesn't have to experience that amulet ever again. And hopefully it's just something that his dad or her dad had to go through and we can leave it at that. And maybe he forever for the rest of this show has the amulet and, and embraces the chaotic nature that is Hudson Abadir, but I don't know. Hopefully Marceline doesn't have to do that. I'd love to see Marceline at the end of the show, not be the one in charge of the night of sphere. Yeah, no, it, it, it won't be that way. So you don't have to like worry about that being okay. a factor again. Yeah, or cool. Like any, it, not, it, I think he learned his lesson at this point that he's going to let her live her own life. And that the best way that they can have a relationship is for him to be like, I am proud of you. And like, again, he doesn't say, obviously doesn't say it enough. Um, to where she feels like he's doing that because that's the only way that he'll be proud of her, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and then after the political rap, we'll just get back into what, what's going on, right? The political rap occurs, the riot distracts her, then goes up, steals amulet and then falls into the ground, puts it on. 
and turns it into kind of a Hudson Avedir esque monster as well. Yeah, a really weird looking one with like closed eye. It was I don't know. Yeah, very weird choice for. I wonder if the closed eyes because he still had some sort of a say. He still had some control. It hadn't fully taken over his body because he was able to take Marceline and Jake and throw them through the portal to get them to safety before he flips. Right, I, I guess. Before he goes full on chaotic mode, and he says, "Yeah, so, no so one's you think it was like still, leave. still like it the, would have the to transformation be. process?" Because be. I was yeah. like, "Why was he able to? Do, why did he have the control to throw them and then literally a second later flip and go? No, what are you doing? No one leaves the night as fear, Marceline. Get back here, right? It has to yeah. be some sort of uh, he had a couple of seconds of." Chaotic well, yeah, I mean, Finn, Finn is the opposite of chaotic evil. Like, so yeah. he might have had just like a little bit more of like a core, I don't know, what, what would you call that? It's a core it does flip. character trait. Yeah, core core values to where he could fight the chaotic evil a little bit longer. Yeah, willpower. Than he, had, he had the willpower yeah. to do it for just a touch. And then, of course, like we mentioned earlier, Hudson Abadir comes in and rips it off of Finn and, and throws him out the portal. It's it's an interesting I mean, little exchange right there. This scene though contains my Jake mistake of the episode when Jake oh. says, "I'm too freaked out to move. The demons are nibbling my legs," and I was like, "Dude, you've got stretchy powers, and all you'd have to do is stretch up into the thing, but you're yeah too scared to move." And I was like, oh, "Okay, this was like I'd be freaked this out." This was man. one of those little <laughs> those demons. Know, they were they were munching on that gross black crap. I just noticed it last time I watched it on th- what the explosion of not Finn of Marceline when they took the amulet off. All the the face, the body. Yeah, they were all everywhere. They the were ground. eating it. I'd be freaking out. Know. I'd be like, "What the heck is going on, man?" Like, I I don't know. I couldn't. <laughs> but too freaked out it. to run away. Like, you know, you either have a it's either fight or, it's flight, fight or flight, and Jake yeah. freezes up in that moment. I was like, you. I think there's a third Jake, option. He I think the third option is that you freeze up and you have no control and you can't do anything. Cause there's gotta be a reason why, like I'm going to say a deer stares in the headlights, but that's not the reason, but like a possum plays dead or whatever. I am. I don't know. Well, no, I'm, I'm trying to think of like when you're just too afraid to move, like that's certainly a thing that occurs, or at least it's a trope in movies. I mean, I've never fortunately seen anything where it's like, why didn't that person just move out of the way? other than uh, in movies. And the one I'm thinking of is the Austin Powers moment when they're in the steamroller and the dude is like 50 feet away and he's just screaming and Austin Powers <laughs> and the girl like, go, get out of the way. What are you doing? And they just crawl up to him and then crush him. <laughs> you know, I, I can only assume he's too afraid to do anything, which Jake was in that episode. I, I don't have a Jake mistake, but I... We'll give you that one. I think that's a fair complaint about Jake. I just yeah. think maybe he truly was too afraid. I don't know. Yeah. Well, he he did have a, again, a, a runner up top moments for me that redeemed his non stretching into the whole moment was when he turned into a dang hang glider, like mid air, and then that they hang glided sweet. down. I was like, yeah. that's, I'd say hang glider Jake is now my second favorite stretchy Jake behind fishing pole hand. That's a cool, convenient power, right? He's yeah. got, th- does he ever fly? Like straight up fly? Because gliding is not flying necessarily. Yeah, I, I'm trying to remember. I don't, I've always thought about this too, but I don't think he ever straight up flies. Okay, the reason I ask is because there's a pretty cool character in One Piece. Me and Allie are watching through One Piece, not to tangent too much, but this character has the ability essentially to have her body parts appear on anything that she can see. Right. So she can make her like an arm show up on a tree, like a hundred feet away or a bunch of eyeballs everywhere. So she can look around in the area around them. In the most recent episode we watched, they're falling and she takes a bunch of hands. She can do multiple hands or, or body parts all at the same time. And she makes angel wings out of hands. And then she's allowed to fly for five seconds. <laughs> she goes, I can, o-. they're like, you can fly. And she's like, yeah, but only for five seconds. It's and like it's the most so- convenient, inconvenient power. Yeah. Ever. I'm like, well, well, first off, like 
that doesn't make any sense. Those are still human hands. It's not like they're hollow bones and the way that she, they're not wings, right? Yeah. It, like, uh, the more hands it's, it's you just add, so the funny. heavier you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. She could do it for, <laughs> she could do it for five full seconds before she falls. Um, <laughs> so I was wondering if Jake could fly it and he may have at some point, like had some sort of a feathery wings come out of his head or something, but I just, yeah, I've, I've, I've always wondered that I've seen like, glidey jake before but i don't ever think we get like true flight flying jake. jake well yeah call us out if y'all can think of one i just can't. yeah i'm trying to think in later seasons but i don't think i can remember anything yeah but i'm gonna I'm look it uh up. but I'm to lead up to all that and before we close everything out you know today i was gonna give my main tops of the episode and a point we didn't bring up that when they transform and disguise into demons finn's was like, you got to be a scary, a more convincing demon. Jake's like, what is your disguise going to be? And he goes, paper plate mask, paper yo. Plate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I loved that moment. That's like the epic, epic fan moment. And one of those moments in Adventure Time where they do that, where they kind of subvert what you think is going to happen, and they're just like, I don't know. Here's a silly solution for the way we're going to be disguised. That's yeah. It's good. I really I enjoy love that, it. I too. Love it. Well, to wrap things up, man, do you have any, any uh, lessons for us today? Yeah, I think I got three lessons. Uh, the first two are going to kind of hark back to what we were talking about earlier. Um, and basically kind of more of less of a lesson and, and more of kind of me soaking in this episode and, and parenting styles. And, and I hope that I understand one day that my kid will have their own plans, much like how Marceline says in her song that she has her own plans and own ambitions. And all that really matters is that they're doing well and that they want to be present and not it's not whether or not they grow up to be exactly what I want them to be or, or they do exactly what I want them to do. I think it's really easy to say that now. And I'm sure some ego or narcissism in me as I have a kid will probably be like, oh, I'll be a cyclist, you know, like, let's, let's go biking. Mm -hmm. Like, here's a bike. Um, but, you know, like, I hope I have the, um, the wisdom to guide a child appropriately um, if I am to ever be a father. Um, and also the second lesson is if you're a good parent, your kid will naturally want to make you proud. I really think that's true. You know, that's and, a cool lesson. And, yeah. and hopefully as a parent, you tell them that you are proud. Um, yes. The yeah. lesson, tell your kids you're proud of them tonight. I think so. Yeah. If you're listening to this and you're a parent, like I don't, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but I definitely take note and it sticks out to me whenever my dad says he's either proud or I love you or the two things that as a 29 year old male, I'm like, oh man, that's cool that my dad says that stuff now. And he may have always said, I'm proud of you, but there are certain times in my life where I may not have listened. And now I'm like, ah, oh, that's, that's awesome. I love that. Um, yeah, man. My third lesson is I'm done eating bananas. I know we all think we know where bananas come from. They're in bundles. But have you ever seen a banana tree personally? Tree. I've never personally seen a banana tree exactly. in real life. And exactly. I, I think I can't. I, I don't think I can eat bananas anymore after seeing this episode. <laughs> well, to be continued. We'll see. What are your lessons? Yeah, then? you'll give us an update on Russell's next banana. Yeah, it sounds good. What's but, your lesson? Um, yeah. I, my lesson, yeah, it actually was cool. I, I flip-flopped. I have one lesson this week, and it it didn't actually, it wasn't the same exact one as yours, but on the same theme, it's like we shouldn't inflict our own trauma from our past onto our children because we were like, oh, yeah, that helped me develop. Oh, yeah, that made, helped me learn this lesson. Like, we'll learn our lessons as we go, and our children will have probably their own trauma. There's no reason to go... Yeah, yeah, they should just deal with that because I had to deal with that, you know. Um, yeah, like I, I think what you just said too is like just being able to put your ego aside is big, and so that's that's my lesson. It's my lesson cool. of today. Yeah, one lesson, man. We switched. Yeah, we totally you switched it up. Switched it up. Uh, I got a wreck, dude. I got a rad wreck. If you're What's into your rad wreck, cool Russell's rock rad wrecks. Russell's rad wrecks. Uh, the B fifty twos, the self titled album. From 1979, Allie and I have been diving so deep 
into the B-52's first album. And it's just banger after banger after banger. You will not regret diving into that first B-52's record. If you like Rock Lobster, it's all goofy. It's all weird. It all almost doesn't make any sense. And it's all going to make you want to dance and just dance this mess around. Yeah. So that's my rec. Noise, noise. I like, yeah. Speaking from an, as a Athens college kid, B-52s is solid. Oh yeah. My recommendation this week has to be God of War, Ragnarok, the new, newer, I guess, God of War game. Dude, I have not had a game that I've been so enthralled in that I want to get every item in every do every dungeon and find every secret in the game. It's very good. It's very wow. Good. So that's awesome. Highly, highly recommended. Cool. Well, heck yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us this week and talking about part two of a little night of sphere adventure. And yeah, I'm happy to have you check us out on Instagram at never ending adventure podcast to talk at never ending adventure cast Twitter at N E a underscore podcast. Email us your thoughts, your opinions. We'll have a traveler's log segment next week. And also check us out on YouTube just to, to help us get moving for if we ever release a visual element and or some sort of a, a I've, I've been thinking about maybe doing a skim down, like taking that first episode, chopping it up and turning it into like an actual YouTube video. I don't know how involved that would be, um, but if we did it, it could be a cool way to have you guys support us and, and grow uh, this little community of travelers. Um, through our Adventure Time lives. But thank you so much. Uh, Yeah, man. Party forever. Oh, you know I loved you guys.